This is Ritesh Srinivasan and welcome to my channel. In this video, let's look at Google Universal Speech Model or USM. Okay, so what they claim over here is that this model is the state of art speech recognition AI for close to 100 plus languages. Okay, so if you look at this particular paper over here, what they claim in the abstract is that it is a single large model. It performs automatic speech recognition across 100 plus languages. How is this achieved? It is achieved by pre-training the encoder of the model on a large unlabeled multilingual data set of 12 million hours spanning over 300 languages. So the key terms are unlabeled multilingual data set okay and this has 12 million hours spanning over 300 languages fine tuning is on a smaller label data set so they use multilingual pre-training with random projection quantization and speech text modality matching uh, to achieve state of art on downstream multilingual speech automatic speech recognition and speech to text translation tasks. What they say is that with just one seventh size of the labeled training set compared to whisper model, this model exhibits better performance. Okay. On both in domain and out of domain speech recognition task across many languages. So they are claiming that this model is better than whisper. Okay. So there is this blog also, and this is the paper. All right, let's look at the blog over here. Uh, this is a 2 billion parameter model. Okay, I've covered this training. It says 12 million hours of speech, 28 billion sentences spanning 300 plus languages. Okay, this is currently in use in YouTube. Okay, and it can perform automatic speech recognition not only on uh, widely spoken uh, languages like English and Mandarin, but also under-resourced languages like uh, Americ, Cebuno, Assamese, right? These are some examples. Okay. Which is for use in YouTube. So I am assuming that this is already in use in YouTube, right? Or I am not sure if which is for use in YouTube. This is intended to be used in YouTube. Okay. Uh, I'm not clear about that part over here. All right. Uh, so they have released this paper. Okay. Uh, now let us look at uh, what is the current, um, this thing, what is the approach over here? All right. So this particular model uses the standard encoder decoder architecture where the decoder can be of uh, CTC, RNNT, LAS. Okay. Now what are these things? Let's look at what is CTC. Okay, CTC stands for Connectionist Temporal Classification, Labeling Unsegmented Sequence Data with Recurrent Neural Networks. Okay, so the decoder can be an RNN or it can be an RNNT. Now, what is this RNNT? This is again sequence transduction with recurrent neural networks. So, it's again some kind of RNNs. Okay, or there is something called LAS. Now, what is this now? Uh, where is LAS? LAS is coming up over here. Uh, this is listen, attend and smell uh, and spell. Basically, it's also a neural network for large vocabulary, conversational speech recognition. Okay. So the decoders can be this. Uh, the encoder for the encoder, it uses something called conformer. Let me see. Okay. So this is the conformer uh, for the decoder part. So this is convolution augmented transformer for speech recognition. So there is a particular architecture over here. Right. So that is the uh, convolution augmented transformer is the encoder. Okay. Uh, here it talks about the key component of the conformer is the conformer block. I think they are talking about this the conformer block, uh, which consists of two macaron like feed forward layers with half step residual connections sandwiching the multi headed self attention and convolution modules. Okay. So basically this consists of that. I think that is what they've explained over here. 
the input it takes is log mel spectrogram of the speech signal performs a convolutional subsampling after which series of convolution or conformer blocks are present okay this particular part is what they have explained over here okay uh, so their training pipeline consists of first step is super self supervised learning on speech audio covering hundreds of languages okay that is the first step the second step is uh, they uh, the second step is an optional step they use something called multi objective supervised pre training to incorporate knowledge from additional text data so this is an optional step uh, it's only on those languages where label text is available uh, where text is available they make use of it okay so that is the optional second step uh, the, uh, the decision to incorporate the second step depends on whether text data is available the last step of the training pipeline is to fine tune on downstream tasks basically automatic speech translation or automatic speech recognition with a small amount of supervised data so there are three steps over here right uh, the details are present in the paper as well so let me open this paper okay uh, so let me go to that particular part where they talk about how they do it i think it is the same figure here yeah it is the same figure but uh, it's it's better explained over here so training is split into three stages the first stage trains a conformer backbone on a large unlabeled speech data set optimized for this best rq objective now best rq is present in another paper uh, i think uh, this is conformer i think it is this paper okay self supervised learning with random projection quantizer for speech recognition so this particular method over here is just like bert they do masked uh, language modeling instead of masked language modeling it is some kind of masked audio modeling pre training okay so that is this particular best rq uh, whatever uh, objective over here this is an unlabeled large data set okay so this is unsupervised pre training okay then they do something called as uh, you know multi objective supervised pre training where you know you have this uh, supervised data 100 hours to 10k per language they also un they have unsupervised text data okay uh, uh text data uh, 28 billion sentences in over 1000 languages and then this is the downstream fine tuning okay for speech recognition where decoder can be any one of these architectures okay um so what they say is that uh, okay we train um, this is the second part uh, where they try to do it on uh, parrot speech and transcript data uh, and text reconstruction objective okay i think the details are present over here if i were to look at it let me go to the details okay so this is the first part where you have this uh, unsupervised pre training on uh, just audio data where this particular uh, you know conformer takes this audio input the mel spectrogram and then it tries to do some kind of masked uh, audio modeling okay at a very high level that is what is done over here okay um then if you look at the second uh, objective uh, okay yeah the second uh, the second stage is explained over here where this is on the speech uh, input right where you are doing this multi um, what you call masked language modeling over the multiple code words or basically audio masked language modeling then you have paired input what is paired input you have the speech basically the audio plus its text available label text available okay so there uh, the text encoder is also additional text encoder is used and what they do is that from the speech encoder uh, the input is given to the shared encoder from both the text and this thing from the audio and you are trying to predict the text okay so that is on paired input and this is purely on text input okay that is a uh, second that most uh, objective basically okay that part which is basically uh, the second stage over here let's go to the architecture so it is this second state multi objective supervised pre training so with this part actually you have uh, now kind of uh, trained your uh, conformer encoder 
okay now that is frozen and then they do in domain fine tuning over here okay with task specific transducer that is what is done in the third stage for speech recognition and this is how the compute required for creating this model uh, is shown over here so 80 percent of compute is in pre-training 15 percent is your uh, multi-objective supervised pre-training right with this your model is frozen and here is the fine tuning on task specific data okay so this is at a very high level the architecture of this universal uh, speech model okay right um, usm stands for universal speech model okay so that is the architecture um, there are details on the data over here what kind of data they looked at um, you know and what is the unpaired audio it's a large unlabeled multilingual data set consisting of 12 hours of youtube based audio covering over 300 languages and there is something called PubView, which is 429k hours of unlabeled speech in 51 languages based on public data sets. Then you have unparried text, which is just text, right, from web NTL, 28 billion sentences spanning over 1140 languages, right. Then you have parried uh, speech recognition data, again YouTube, uh, from YouTube, right. This is 90k hours of labeled multilingual data covering 73 languages and 100k hours from NUS uh, pseudo label data generated by noisy student trading. So this is the data set and this pub is 10k hours of labeled multi domain US public data with 10k labeled multilingual public data covering 102 languages. So this is their data sets. Okay. So what they say over here is that uh, with this approach, if you look at the performance, uh, Despite limited supervised data, the model achieves 30% word error rate. Lower uh, is better. Basically, word error rate, lower is better. On average, across 73 languages. Okay, and they say that this is a milestone which is never achieved before. Uh, the supervised YouTube data consists of 73 languages. Okay, on, on that data set of supervised data, this is what is their claim. So they compare it with Whisper Large also, which has been trained on more than 400k hours of labeled data. Uh, for that comparison, they use only 18 languages that Whisper can successfully decode with lower than 40% word error rate. Our model has on average a 32.7% relative lower word rate compared to Whisper for these 18 languages. So that is their claim over here. Okay, so the whisper one on these 18 languages has, um, you know, 40% word, uh, less than 40% word error rate. Whereas this model is even much lesser on those 18 languages. Okay. So that is the performance over here. And uh, so they also say that on other downstream ASR tasks or automatic speech recognition tasks, uh, this particular model performs better than whisper okay also on automatic speech translation they have also claimed the same over here right and this particular uh, you know uh, usm is a critical effort towards the thousand languages mission of google okay uh, so thousand languages initiative is shown over here uh, it is an ambitious commitment to build a machine learning model that would support world's 1000 most spoken languages that is the idea. So this is a first critical step. That is what they are saying over here. Okay. Uh, so the paper is linked over here and you can also, you know, researchers can request access to the USM API. So if you go to that, uh, you know, you can actually request API access. So whether access will be given to you depends upon the use case and other things, which is their addition, but you can try, you know, uh, requesting for access. So this was at a very high level about this universal speech model. There are so many nuances over here in the paper, you know, multiple papers you need to read to understand this particular, uh, you know, architecture and other things. So I'll be putting a link to this blog as well as to the paper in the description of the video. You can read through it. I hope you like this video. If you like the video, please like, share, subscribe to the channel. See you in another video.